Hello everyone, welcome to the 19th iOS tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about a web application, how we can create a web application. By web application, I mean you create a web component and you want to wrap it with iOS uh, project. So let's move on. Let's create a new application. Create a new Xcode project. And we call it web app. And it's for iPhone. So next. And create. Okay. Here's our storyboard. And all we want is just a UI web view. If we look at the palette uh, here, a type UI web will bring us this web view. So we have to drag and drop inside of our view. And then go to the controller. Let me make your font a little bit bigger. Presentation. Okay. And first we have to create the outlet. So you have to drag and drop from this view and create the outlet. Drag and drop this between interface and end and release it. So it creates the outlet and we call it web view. Okay, now we're done with the storyboard, so let's just go back to the code and see what exactly we need. At first, uh, we need to uh, add our HTML file here. For example, like a CSS, uh, like JavaScript file. So I created a web app very simple application and it's containing this HTML tags so it is very simple I use the bootstrap uh, CSS and simple tags here and it is runnable on the uh, browsers so it is here when you run it it will have this simple tags so we want to show this on the iOS application. So what we need to do at first, we have to drag and drop this file, this is our file, this is the HTML file, inside of our project. So you just drag it and drop it inside of the application. And it asks you uh, if you want to copy item into destination group, you make sure that this is checked. Uh, and also, if you have a folders for your JavaScript or CSS file, right now we don't have any folder, but if you have a folder, make sure that it's on create folder reference for any added folders. Otherwise, it cannot recognize your CSS or JavaScript files. So be sure that it's on create folder reference. And then you just click finish. Because I don't have any folder here, I just use the first option and then click finish. Now your HTML file is here and you can right away edit it from here. So let's go back to our view controller. What we need here, let me just clear everything here. These are the default value and make the screen big. Okay. And now what we need is at first we need to uh, use a UI web view delegate. So we have a delegate method for UI web view delegate. And it has a really cool um, methods for our purpose. So for example, first of all we have to put ourselves as a delegate. So we go to self that web view the delegate equals to self 
Remember, one of the steps for uh, delegation is that we need to put ourselves equal to delegate. And in order to scale the page exactly like um, the device size and, and frame size, we need to use a method called um, it is called scale page scale page to fit and it fits the screen in view to uh, the size of the web view frame so that's all this line is doing and then we have to uh, show the path of our HTML file so in order to create a path for this HTML file, we need to say NS string and then uh, show the HTML file. We call it HTML file and equal to and this this is called NS bundle and all it does it search through the application and finds the path for our resource. Find path for our resource and what is the resource name? It is HTML. If you look at the name, oh we have it, it is this is called bootstrap. So this time we have to put bootstrap. So the name of the resource is bootstrap. And then it wants what type is it? So the type is HTML. HTML. Now we have the file now. So we want the URL for this. And this is basically the path for this. URL and it's URL. And we call it URL and and NS URL file file URL with path and we call it HTML file. And now we want to create a request for in order to request to show our um, HTML file, we have to create a request and it is called NS URL request the first time. and see our request and we call it request request and how we create it we say ns ns url request request with url and cache policy as well but what is our url URL we've just created it's our URL a cache policy the cache policy says for example and um, every time that you load the web view it gets the information from uh, the cache or they we want it to every time it refresh it so it's based on your decision you want to reload every time you are creating your web view or you want to use cache so this time it says NSUR request NSURL uh, request reload ignoring cache data. We don't want to use cache data. And time interval time interval is zero. Okay. That's it. And then the last thing that we have to do is send this request to our web view. Self dot web view load request and our request. That's all we have to do in order to have our web app. So let's run our application and see if it's working. Okay, here is our web app, and it seems that it's working fine. So, and this is all of our tag, and it's showing it properly. It is very simple and easy.
Sometimes you want to load a web page inside of your application and it's even easier. You just don't need these two line and you need to change your request to this. Sorry. To this. And say what page you want to load. For example, here I want to load google.com. So you just say NS request this URL request, request with this URL. If you run the program, it should show Google as a result inside of your application. But you can change this URL, whatever URL you want. And it is loading, of course, the Google page. And you can do search and all other stuff that you do inside of the web. With easy change, we can do even more cool things. For example, if I want to have a bar here, a kind of toolbar you just have to go to the palette and, and drag and drop this toolbar inside of your storyboard make sure it's in the middle and then put back this next to this and if I show you the scene if you remember the scene this is the button for scene show document outline and you from here and uh, you see the bar button item which is this item and uh, this item I can at first change the and um, how it looks because I want to show uh, for example refresh button see from here you can see refresh instead of showing item in identifier you show refresh and it shows icon for refresh and we want to refresh the page when the user press this button all you have to do you drag and drop control drag no sorry not drag and drop just control drag to the web view and when you release it it shows what option you want you want to reload so you choose reload and also we want a button to go back you get, grab a button here, bar button item, and drag it next to this. And in the identifier, you want to say it's a back button, if you have a back button. Uh, we can use rewind or forward, but uh, let's see if we have a back. No, we don't have. So uh, I choose this one. And this is exactly the same. You just control drag, and this time we use go back. And the same thing for using forward identifier, fast forward, and we control again, we control drag, and this time you go forward. And we also have stop. We can choose stop as well if we drag and drop barbon an item and we have stop, yeah, have stop. So it will stop the page from reloading. So we control drag from this item and it says stop loading. So if I run the application, I should have a bar with these functionalities it doesn't need, doesn't even need a code for it so if I search something here I click tag and search and then go to the website and it's loading and I want to go back it go back I want to fast forward and I want to refresh the page that's all of these functionalities working. I want to stop refreshing. Put this and to go back again. So all of the functionality is working. This is really simple um, application. By really small development, you have all of the access to UI WebView. And I think that's pretty much about UI WebView. Till next time.